California is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I'd like to thank the gentlelady from New York for making the case for firing Comey, making the case for why both Democrats and Republicans had very valid reasons that we wanted the president to let him go for his unprofessional and insubordinate uh, activity. And yet, once the president did it, somehow he was wrong. Uh, in your report, uh, Horowitz, you bring out the fact that uh, the former director was, in fact, uh, at times unprofessional, didn't follow rules, and even insubordinate, correct? That's correct. So we have a reason to fire somebody. The gentlelady from New York just made the case in resounding ways, uh, if what she believes to be true is true, that he should have been fired and fired immediately. Uh, and probably would have been fired by President Clinton had she become president. Uh, but I, I want to go on to two other points, and one of them is the standard for bias. Now, I'm a former, I guess I'm an employer now, but, but in the years that I was a manufacturer and, and, and so on, you know, the, the definition for most of us for a bias, if reviewing text or emails, and anything close to what Strzok and Page were saying and others occurred, and we were in an EEOC or some other kind of complaint, we'd be held clearly for this to have met the requirement for any action whatsoever that was less than favorable for an employee, a termination and so on, we would be held as having a bias. Matter of fact, every member up here on the dais had to go through 90 minutes of training mm -hmm. in which they gave us examples that for a fraction of what Page and Strzok had done, if there were any adverse action whatsoever, we'd be held as biased. How is it you can say you found no evidence of bias? What makes the standard different for the Department of Justice? Well, let me be clear. We did not say in, uh, that, that their words act, uh, and texts and these messages were not indicative of bias. In fact, we were very concerned with them because they, that kind of bias and those kind of So views, you found bias. But, but the actions, that's the question. Right. The famous insurance policy, the, the, the likelihood that they were in, quote, Andy's office and were plotting, conspiring to figure out a way to either keep the president from winning or hurt him, that, that, that conspiracy, that evidence of that conspiracy is not enough to be an action. Isn't a conspiracy an action separate from what you might do if you conspire? to blow up the Oklahoma City uh, federal building, you don't have to succeed for there to be a crime. Isn't that true? Yeah, there's a conspiracy you don't have to actually carry it out um, at all. And I agree with you, the concern evident in those texts in August. So they had a bias and they had a conspiracy to do something. We just don't know exactly what that is. Is that well, correct? I'm going to put aside what they had a conspiracy to do. But I, I do think that what was reflected there in August translated directly for us into concerns about what occurred a month later in September. Okay, so I see it as there's a bias, a conspiracy, and they did do some things wrong, and that came out clearly in your report. Very clearly, there was a reason to fire uh, the former FBI Director Comey, uh, and it was a bipartisan uh, effort, I guess, I, I would say that maybe Republicans would have objected if President Clinton had fired him, uh, but that isn't the case. Uh, I want to ask, though, a question back to, <clears throat> back to uh, <clears throat> Mr. Comey. Uh, last Thursday, when you issued your report, basically four hours before uh, uh, that was issued, his op-ed came out showing that he had clearly read the report. How did he get to see the report before it was public? So, um, as with all of our reviews, first of all, he did not see the whole report. Um, but as with all of our reviews, um, but he's a that former here. member, a right. former person. Did do all former employees yeah. get this? Um, so the process is, and we did this from Fast and Furious on forward to ones that never make headlines. Um, if individuals whose conduct we criticize in a report have testified to us and voluntarily agreed to speak to us. As you know, this has been an issue that you've supported us right. on, getting testimonial subpoena authority. One of the, right. we, without we that authority. We want you to have it for former employees. Right. Without that authority, they have to come in voluntarily. And one of the things that we do is, if they come in voluntarily and speak to us, okay, so, so you we allow the quid pro quo to, is you let him see it. Did only he sign those portions of the report. Did he sign a non-disclosure? Uh, he did. 
So when he uh, when he published before it came out, he effectively breached the non-disclosure, didn't he? I'd the gentleman's time has expired, but you may timing. answer the question. I'd have to actually look at the exact timing um, on that, on when it came out on Thursday versus when our report came out. I frankly didn't focus on that question before. Well, you certainly had disclosed it to the newspaper to get it published in yeah. that timing. He must have been disclosing it to newspaper mm -hmm. personnel hours or days ahead of time, and that right. would seem to be a violation of that non-disclosure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman yields back. The gentlelady from Texas is recognized.